During this segment of our course, we will show you the proper methods and procedures to be followed in the reassembly of a right angle single reduction gearbox. We'll use the same gearbox which was disassembled in the last segment. To begin with, we will reassemble the parts which fit on the blind end of the low speed shaft. First, we'll replace the radial roller bearing being pointed out. The workmen remove the outer race from the bearing since the outer race must be installed separately in the bearing carrier. He is using an induction heater to heat the remainder of the bearing parts before shrinking them onto the shaft. When the bearing has expanded enough from the heat, the workman quickly slides it into its proper position on the shaft. Note that he is using asbestos gloves to prevent possible burns. After the bearing has cooled, he places the lock washer on the shaft, like this. Then replaces the umbrella by screwing it on and tightening it with a spanner wrench, as shown here. Don't forget to lock the assembly in place by bending one of the lock washer tabs into a slot in the umbrella. The next part to be installed is the outer race of the radio bearing we just finished replacing on the low speed shaft. It must be returned to its position in the bearing carrier. After starting the outer race into the bearing carrier, use a block of wood, like this, to drive it the rest of the way in. Using the wooden block prevents damage to the bearing race. Once your installation is complete, the race will be seated in the bearing carrier as shown here. Inspect it closely to make sure it is positioned firmly and evenly in its seat. Needless to say, there is a variety of methods by which this may be accomplished. We have shown you just one example. With the bearing race in position, the next step is to replace the inner bearing retainer and secure it with the cap screws. Don't forget to replace the wire in the cap screw heads to prevent them from backing out during operation of the gearbox. It's generally considered good practice to apply a coat of lubricating oil to the outer race which was just installed in the bearing carrier. This will lubricate the bearing during the initial startup of the equipment until the oil pump circulates the oil. Now the workman prepares to lower the low speed shaft back into the bearing outer race he just installed in the bearing carrier. However, he stops for a moment to apply a good coat of oil to the radial bearing. Then he lowers the shaft the remaining distance until the bearing is seated properly and removes the sling. That completes the first phase of our reassembly. Our next task will be to replace the parts on the high speed shaft. The workman is beginning by heating the radial bearing on an induction heater prior to shrinking it onto the shaft. Once the bearing reaches the proper temperature, the workman uses asbestos gloves to slide it into position on the high-speed shaft. Next, the workman tries the key in the shaft keyway to determine whether the fit is acceptable. It may be necessary to remove burrs with a file until the fit is snug. Check the key fit in the gear also. Again, a snug fit is generally considered acceptable. This pinion gear is relatively small, therefore it is possible to heat it on an induction heater prior to installation. It may be necessary to use another method for larger gears. Your supervisor can help you out if you should encounter a problem. As you did with the bearings, use asbestos gloves for protection and slide the pinion gear quickly into place on the high-speed shaft. In many cases, the gear will shrink away from the shoulder of the shaft when it cools. If this should happen, it may be necessary to tap the gear back into place, as the workman is doing here. Now, replace the lock washer and lock nut, and tighten the nut firmly with a spanner wrench, like this. Don't forget to lock the lock washer into a slot on the lock nut. If you don't, the nut could work loose later. That completes our reassembly of the parts on the high-speed shaft. The next phase of our reassembly will be to put the high-speed cartridge back together.
The workman begins with the outer race of the radial bearing, which we just installed on the high-speed shaft. It must be replaced in the blind end of this cartridge. This is done, as we did earlier, by hammering it into place with a wooden block. However, as we mentioned, it could be done by other methods, including freezing the race and letting it expand in its fit. With the bearing race seated properly, the next step will be to replace the inner bearing retainer. However, you must be very careful to ensure that the oil passageways in the cartridge and retainer, which are being pointed out, are properly aligned during installation. Tighten the cap screws on the retainer. Then replace the safety wire to prevent them from working loose. Now install a new gasket on the high-speed cartridge flange that makes up against the case. Make sure this gasket is the same thickness as the one that was removed during disassembly. Our next step is to install the cartridge on the high-speed shaft. This is done by standing the high-speed shaft on the pinion gear and sliding the cartridge over it until the radial bearing is seated properly. Don't forget to lubricate the bearing to prevent damage during startup of the gearbox. The next step will be to reinstall the bearing spacers and angular contact bearings in the cartridge. The workman begins by sliding the inner spacer into position like this. Then he slides the first angular contact bearing down the shaft, making sure that it is being replaced correctly according to the mounting arrangement which is required for this gearbox. The bearing must then be driven or pressed into place inside the bearing cartridge. It is impossible to heat the bearing for this installation because the expansion would prevent the outer race from fitting inside the cartridge. Therefore, the bearing must either be driven down, like this, or pressed on with some type of hydraulic press. When this bearing is seated against the shaft shoulder, install the two center spacers and lubricate the first bearing and the spacers. Repeat the procedure for the second angular contact bearing. Check the position in which it must be mounted and start it onto the shaft. Then either drive or press it into place in the bearing container. Be very careful to avoid contaminating the bearing in any way. Your tools should be free of any dirt which could drop into the bearings during reassembly. You should also lubricate the outer bearing in the cartridge after it has been installed. The next step is to lower the high-speed cartridge assembly back into the bottom half of the gear case. Our workman is using a small mirror to ensure that the gears are properly meshed according to the match marks. This is very important. Here is a close-up view of what the workman sees in his mirror, confirming that the gears are properly meshed. Next to be replaced are the lock nut, lock washer, and umbrella, as shown here. First, screw the lock nut on the shaft and tighten it securely with a spanner wrench. Position the lock washer against the lock nut and then tighten the umbrella, as shown here. Remember to set lock washer tabs in both the lock nut and in the umbrella to prevent them from working loose. The next phase of the reassembly process is to reinstall the top half of the gear case on the bottom half. However, the gasket surfaces of both halves must be clean and dry. Inspect them carefully for nicks and cuts, too, as the workman is doing here. As you may remember from the disassembly of this gearbox, there was no gasket between the gear case halves. The case is sealed through the use of a sealing compound, being applied to the bottom case half by the workman. Attach slings to the top case half and position it over the bottom half. Then lower it into place and seat it firmly on the bottom half. The alignment of the two case halves is ensured through the use of the dowel pins, one of which is being installed by the workman here. Now the workman uses two cap screws to pull the cartridge into contact with the case halves. When they are tight, 
the workman removes the two cap screws. The next step will be to install the outer bearing retainer on the open end of the high-speed shaft. However, you must not forget to install the outer spacer in the retainer before doing so. You must also replace the gasket which was removed during disassembly. This new gasket should be the same thickness as the old one. This may be accomplished by referring to the measurement of the old gasket you took during disassembly. The thickness of this gasket is very important, since it controls the amount of end play of the high-speed shaft. We'll show you how to measure the end play in the next segment of our course. With the gasket in place, slide the outer bearing retainer carefully into place over the high-speed shaft until it seats against the cartridge. Then, replace the cap screws which hold the bearing retainer and cartridge to the gear case. Tighten the cap screws with a torque wrench using the amount of torque specified in the manufacturer's manual for the gearbox you're working with. Although the dowel pins were replaced earlier during reassembly, recheck them now to ensure that they are firmly seated. Now, replace the cap screws used to secure the two halves of the gear case. Again, use a torque wrench to tighten the cap screws using the torque specified by the manufacturer. Remember to use the crossover method to prevent the case from tilting as the screws are tightened. The next phase of the reassembly will be to reinstall the low-speed bearing cartridge and its parts on the closed end of the low-speed shaft. Refer to the measurement you took of the cartridge to case gasket during disassembly and obtain a replacement gasket of the same thickness. This thickness is very important to the backlash of the gears, which we will talk more about in the next segment of our course. Seat the bearing cartridge carefully in place on the new gasket. Replace the cap screws in the cartridge. However, do not tighten them down until we have replaced the bearings. First to be installed in the cartridge is the inner bearing spacer, shown here. Then the first of the two angular contact bearings is installed in the bearing cartridge. As with the high-speed cartridge, it will be necessary to drive or press the bearing in. However, you should block up the opposite end of this shaft to permit seating the bearing on the shaft shoulder and to prevent damaging the bottom radial bearing. And don't forget to install the bearing according to the mounting arrangement you recorded during disassembly. With the first bearing in place, the workman installs the two center spacers, as shown here. He then lubricates the bearing to prevent damage during startup. Next, install the second angular contact bearing in the cartridge according to the mounting arrangement, in this case, back to back. Lubricate the second bearing as you did the first, and replace the outer spacer in the bearing cartridge. With the bearings and spacers in place, the next step is to secure them in position. This is done by replacing the first of the two lock nuts on the end of the shaft and tightening it down. Remember to replace the lock washer and then tighten the second lock nut against the lock washer as shown. Both lock nuts must be secured in position with the lock washer as the workman is doing here. The next step in our reassembly procedure is to turn the low-speed shaft manually to check for possible binding. If binding is detected, it will be necessary to locate the cause and remedy it at this time. Now that the bearings have been reinstalled in the cartridge, the cartridge cap screws may be tightened. Using a torque wrench, apply the amount of torque specified by the manufacturer in tightening these cap screws. That completes the basic reassembly of the gearbox, except for the outer bearing retainer and oil pump on the low-speed shaft and the replacement of the inspection plates. First, however, it will be necessary to complete a number of checks and adjustments to the gearbox. These will be covered in detail in the next segment. Now, open your workbook to exercise number eight.